power over death. I decree and declare that you will not die untimely. Amen. Death will not have power over you. Amen. Death means both spiritually and physically will not have power over you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. To only you that said amen, you will not die untimely. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. John 10.10 10 is our text. The thief's purpose is to steal and to kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. That's how my transcription puts it. To give them a rich and satisfying life. Satan is the one behind everything bad, including death. He came to kill, but Jesus came to give life. He came to kill, but Jesus came to do what? To do what? God will give you life in Jesus' name. John 11 verse 25 to 26. ESV. John 11 verse 25 to 26 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who shall live, who lives and believes in me, shall never die. Do you believe this? 2 Timothy 1 verse 10 says, But now, has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He brought life and immortality to light through what? The gospel. You will live. Amen. You will not die. Amen. You will live. Amen. And you will not die. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is wrong to die on time. It is wrong to do what? Can somebody say I won't die on time? I will not die on time. Say I will not die on time. I will not die on time. If I say say something and you are looking at me and not saying it, that means you hate the, you like the opposite of what I'm saying. You say your life is in your mouth. The scripture says so. So I'm telling you to call life upon you. Are you hearing me now? God created the universe in such a way that everything moves zigzag. You only repel them not to come your way when you use your mouth to repel them. But you attract them when you also close your mouth. Can somebody say again, I will not die untimely? I will not die untimely. Somebody say it again like you understand it. Me, Mac Miracle will not die untimely. Put your name. I will not die untimely. Sickness cannot kill me. Sickness cannot kill me. Accident cannot kill me. Accident cannot kill me. Stray bullet cannot kill me. Stray bullet cannot kill me. Kidnappers cannot kill me. Kidnappers cannot see me. I will not Die untimely. I will not die untimely. May it be unto you like we have spoken. Amen. May it be unto you like we have declared. Amen. May the authors agree with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is wrong to die untimely. Mm. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. He says, For everything there is a season. Everything has a season. Everything does what? Have a season. The time you were born was the season for you to be birthed. The time to die is also a season. Do you understand me now? Yes, sir. Can you pluck a corn that is not mature to eat? No. If they give you, will you eat it? No. Because that is not the season for you to eat that corn. So therefore, it's not the season for you to die. Do you understand me now? Yes, sir. It's not my season to die. Somebody says it's not my season to die. It's not my season to die. When it is season, I will know. Yes. It is not now. Hear me now? Says everything that is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. From the scripture we read, it is clear to say that you can't be plucked out when you are not ripe. And every human being ripes at old age. That's when you are ripe to be plucked back to heaven at old age at 100 it is not god's wish that any of us should die below 100 it's not his wish genesis 6 verse 3 says that the lord said my spirit shall not abide in man forever for he is flesh his days shall be 120 so yours is to cross 100 not to die below 100 are you hearing me now yes, jeremiah 29 verse 11 says for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. Any 
anything that wants to truncate God's, God's plan in your life, we are part it this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anything that wants to scatter his plan of longevity for you, we uproot it by the blood of Jesus. Amen. He says he knows his plan for you to give you an expected end. The expected end is to die when you have set your house in order. The expected end is to die when you have fulfilled purpose. The expected end is to die when you have accomplished great things on earth. Have you accomplished anything yet? No. Nothing. You've not built your houses, even though you are built, you have still have more to build. You're not riding a car, if you, even though you are riding a car, you still have more to ride. You've not trained many in schools. You've not given a scholarship. You have not done what you need to do for the kingdom of God. So it's not yet time to, to die. die. Whether headache comes, whether sickness comes, temptation comes, that is by the way. They can't take your life. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. Somebody say it can't take my life. It can't take my life. Somebody say it can't take my life. It can't take my life. It can't take your life. I told God I am not going to bury anybody in this ministry now. And for three years he has answered that prayer. He will keep on answering that prayer. Amen. Amen. Tell him I don't want to bury any young person in this church. God, you have given me, you have given this church young, young people. And the light of the church is the young ones. Do you understand me now? Yes, the light of every church is the young generation. So we will not bury any young man. The old men in this church will not bury any young children. Are you hearing me now? We will, our old men will get to 100. Amen. And we will get to 100 too. Amen. We will not bury you untimely. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Until we hold God with His word, He won't perform them in our lives. So we have to hold Him. Don't give up on His word. Hold Him by His word. My word will not return to me void. God said so. So whenever sickness comes, you say, God, you said your word will not return to you void. Therefore, I declare I will not die untimely. I declare I will not die a pauper. I declare I will not die a pauper. I declare I will not die in sickness. Amen. Amen. Whatsoever you say, it happens likewise. Causes of untimely death. If you don't know the cause of a thing, then you can't avert it. So how do you know the cause of untimely death? The church needs serious overhauling. God will give us the finance to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we are complaining about our laptop, our mics, keyboards, everything. And it turned on me that for three years, these things have actually served us. Three of us. They have tried for three years. They have actually served. So God will give us the funds to get better one in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, I said, we are going to buy mics, new mics. When I said that, I didn't give money anywhere. If you don't know, I spent everything to renew. We spent everything to renew our rent. So when I say something on the other, I say it by faith. I say we are going to get new mic. And on Saturday we got two new mics. To tell you that when God, when you speak something, God has it. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. Now we decree our new keyboard will come. Amen. Our new keyboard will come. Amen. Everything needed for the ministry, God will bring it. Amen. New cameras, new laptops, new everything. Amen. You will walk in inside the house and say, Wow, new. Everything. This Sunday is disturbing. No, it's just to put easy and close the door and do our service. Two of us. Yes, yes even though there's overflows, and we can still close the door and give them the television. Close the door and save ourselves from the sound. Is that not a good one? Even in your house, something you are lacking, like, God will give it to you. Amen. God will give it to you. Amen. In your business, God will expand. Amen. God will expand it. Amen. But you will not die entirely. Amen. I know what I'm saying when I say you will not die. Amen. Not by mistake, not by error. Nobody will kill you. Amen. For the covenant of long life on this altar, you will partake of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 7. So we are talking about the causes of death. Number one, sin. Romans 5, verse 12 to 13 says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. Through Adam's sin entered the world, and through that sin, death came. You are not dying because you are a sinner. You are any person that dies because of sin is not because you are a sinner. It's because you rejected to accept Jesus. Are you hearing me now? Sin does not kill. What kills you is rejecting to accept Jesus. So when sin comes, you accept him. He came to give life. Are you hearing me now? He came to give you life in abundance. That's number one. 
the sin of wickedness, the sin of stubbornness, the sin of witchcraft, anything you can categorize sin into, they cause death. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 17. But don't be too wicked or too foolish either. Why die before you have to? That's the book of Ecclesiastes. Number two thing that causes death is stubbornness. Towards correction and reproof. Proverbs 14 verse 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Stubbornness towards correction, correction and reproof is another cause for death. Don't go this way. No, I know what I'm doing. Let me go that way. Don't do this. No, I know what I'm doing. Let me do that thing. Stubbornness towards correction and reproof can cause untimely death. Number three, what can cause untimely death? Negative thoughts. Negative thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8 to 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. God says so. Neither are my ways your ways. Declare the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. When you don't know what God has spoken about you, you lose peace of mind, which is in turn could lead to untimely death. Think the way God thinks. Don't think what the word brings before you. The problems of life are too many. Don't think about it. Temptations are so many. Don't think about it. They will lead to untimely death. Worries are so many. Don't think about it. If you want to worry today, there are been, if you want to sit down today and worry, there are what plenty of things that can make you worry. The nightfall you will be worrying. But he says his thoughts are not your thoughts. If God's thought is not your thought, and God is a supernatural being, it means if you want to live a supernatural life, you have to live your thoughts and think the way he thinks. Sickness may come, think health. Poverty may come, think riches. Temptation may come, think victory. Whatever Satan poses and brings before you is to cut your life short. So what you do is not to think the way he has programmed life for you. Don't think what is happening. Think what could happen. Don't think the problems. Think the victory that could come. Don't think everything that Satan is posing, posing towards you. Think that God has something better. He said, my thought towards you are the thoughts of peace to give you an expected end. John chapter 16 verse 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Take heart means think what I have told you. Console yourself with my word. Make this your syllabus of thinking that I have overcome the world for you. Tell your neighbor God has overcome the world. So think right. Number four, negative confession. What could lead to untimely death? Negative confession. It is what you speak that the end is carrying into action. Someone can die quickly when they speak death, but your life you live longer when you, your mouth is filled with life. Don't think you are joking when you say, I'm on don't die all those god forbid those things are cutting short one's life you have to learn to confess positively every negative confession is registered upon someone's life luke chapter 23 verse 46 says then jesus calling out a loud voice said father into your hands i commit my spirit and having said this he breathed his last breath even Jesus died when he confessed death. If Jesus on the cross did not hand over his spirit, he wouldn't die. He would still be there on the cross. Till today he would be hanging there. But he said, I commit my spirit to you. The pain has become so much, he committed his spirit. This is teaching you that what you say, what you voice out, is what you leave out. Never confess negatively, despite negative situations. Never say negative words. That's my negative. I have said this over and over, and I will keep on saying it. Because in your mouth lies your life. Number five, fear of death. Fear of what? Death can cause untimely death. Sickness don't kill, but the fear behind the sickness can kill faster. Pains would kill, but the fear behind the pains can kill anyone faster. One pain can kill another, but another person can withstand it and survive it. The difference is the heart. If pain
pain gives, then everyone should be dead on the surface of the earth because everyone has passed through one pain or the other. But it depends on the heart with which you withstand that pain. So don't have fear of death. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Why did God say he will strengthen you? Because he knows that what will challenge your strength will come. For you are with me. Psalm 23 verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, that means things that represent death must come. So even though I walk through it, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. John 14 verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. So tell your neighbor, don't be afraid of death. Tell someone, don't be afraid of death. Don't be afraid of death. Do you know some people can just sit down and be afraid of death? They just be afraid. Say, this thing can happen. That one can happen. You know this thing can happen. Some people can sit and be imagining what if they die. What kind of thought is that? You don't know what to think of. You sit down and be thinking, what if I die? What kind of thought is that? What if all this thing we are doing? What if all this thing I'm buying? What if I'm not there to, to wear them? What if I'm not there to enjoy life? No! Don't think that. Satan can't attack you until he plants fear into your heart. So the first thing he does is to do what? To plant fear. To plant fear. That's how he manifests. Somebody in your chest and say, I won't be afraid. I won't be afraid. Somebody say, I won't be afraid of death. I won't be afraid of death. I won't be afraid of death. He has given you power over them. Six causes of untimely death. Greed and uncontrolled rush towards the cares of life. Greed and uncontrolled rush towards the cares of life. Okay, I know you need that car. I know you need that wares. I know you need to register your name like people who have made it. But slow down. Calm down. Ecclesiastes says there is time for what? Do you force mango to ripe? You force mango to ripe? When mango ripes naturally and you eat it, the taste is different from the one people buy and use something to cover the hot water to do. To ripe. True of us. True. You will differentiate the two. That is life. Life is a process. Give life. Allow life to process itself out. Allow life to do what? To process itself. Don't force anything to just happen quickly. Is somebody hearing me now? Yes, sir. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, sir. Don't force life to, to just happen. Allow life to process. You do just wake up and just carry, carry and eat. You do what? You boil water first, two of us. That garden first passed through the first fire, frying, and still you can't eat it. It has to pass through another fire. You will boil what if the water is not well boiled, it will be like drinking garden, two of us. Yes, sir. It is well boiled, and some people even making it like that, they still don't eat it. They still pass it through the mother to pan it well. Yes, yeah, some people pan garden so that it will look like it is for them. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. They pass through this process, then when you come down and eat it, you feel nourished. Allow life to process itself. Stop looking at Mr. A or Mrs. B and comparing their race with yours. Everybody is on a race, but not everyone started at the same time. Yes, so you can't arrive at the same time. Yes, if you force yourself to arrive at when Mr. A arrives, you might die on time. Allow life to play out. Those who you finished O level with have gone to school. You have not gone to school. Allow your life to play out the way God has designed it. The lecturer that can teach you the way you, you understand have not been employed in that university where you will enter. When they employ that lecturer, you will enter school. Yes, sir. God has a peculiar person that will teach you according to the peculiarity of your brain. Yes, sir. So don't kill yourself that you have not gone to school yet. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. I am not married yet. Everybody is married. Look at this young pastor preaching. He's even married. Look at this other one. They are married. They are not married. My dear, calm down. All the men around would beat shake out of your head. 
that is not the kind of man God wants for you. The one you are seeing and then born on Tuesday to Saturday, God wants a man made on Sunday for you. Mm. So calm down. All the men he be sending from heaven, they arrive on Monday to Saturday. There are ones that will arrive on Sunday. God has programmed that one for you. Are you hearing me now? So why do you want to force God? Allow God. Calm down. Don't by force him. Somebody say, don't by force me. Don't by force me. Life is a process. But if you force life, you squeeze life out of yourself. God, money now. Sunday like this, people go to pleasure park. Some people will go to watch cinema at Genesis. Some people will go for fast food. After Sunday, they take their friends and family out. You keep watching them. Keep marking time. Keep eating that trash you are eating. And you feel that God has forgotten you. By the time your own happen, they will ask, how come this young man is dashing bag of rice like as a cup of curry? By the time your own happen, it will look as if the whole fast food in Port Harcourt, you can shut down all of them at the same time. Am I speaking to somebody now? Yes, yes. Allow life to play out. Don't kill, don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. Don't kill yourself. Look at them, they are riding cars. When will I even have a car? Okay, I don't even have car, I even trek. I can't even afford transport. Calm down. There will be a time when you will give out cars. And when you tell somebody that you there was a time you are trekking, the person will say, I'm gonna lie, I don't believe you. When God favored Zion, they were, it was as if people were dreaming. So when God will favor you, it will be like a dream. I said it will be like a dream. Amen. You ask yourself, how did it happen? As I am speaking, I don't joke with my words. My tongues are coals of fire. My tongues are what? Coals of fire. As I am speaking, it is happening. I said God will change your des destiny. Amen. Amen. He will change your testimonies. Amen. He will turn things around for you. Amen. Amen. Last one, I said, when I'm speaking, it is happening. I shared the testimony. Let me share it again. As I was preaching, I asked, did you hear me say, we will buy mics this Sunday? I said, God will give us new mics in Jesus. Did I say last Sunday? So on Monday, I was relaxed. Somebody called me. He said, how are you? I said, Pastor, I'm doing fine. He said, thank you for praying for me. He said, Pastor, I want to send you money to cook good, to give your wife to cook. He, he, he prescribed a, a, a particular soup that my wife should cook for me. He said, okay, I'll give her the money. He said, any other thing? Is there anything? How is church? I said, church is going fine. Everything is going. He said, okay, can I buy anything for church? Okay, I said, Mike. He said, I said, he said, Mike. He said, okay. There and then, he said, somebody will transfer money in less than how many minutes? I said, in less than two minutes, somebody will transfer money. As I just dropped my phone, I saw a lot, 50K. We went and bought two mics. The remaining I cooked the food. He said, I should cook and eat. Prophet, when they pray the job too. I hear me now. I hear me now. Yes, this is a testimony. I said it casually last week, two of us. If you were in church last Sunday, don't tell me you forgot it. I said it casually on the order. I said, these mics are worrying us too much. We are going to get mic. I hear me now. Yes, sir. Now I speak. That place they live, they, they worry you too much. You will soon pack it to your own house. Amen. Amen. I speak casually again. That thing that you've been telling God, I need this. May my God mm. give it to you. Amen. Amen. I speak again. That thing threatening your life, may God push it out of your way. Your way. Amen. Amen. I come like I came last Sunday. Yes, I sir. speak again. Wherever yes. money is lacking, may God give you that money in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I speak again in the name of Jesus. Whoever is planning your downfall, I push them down for your sake. Amen. I come like a prophet and I decree anyone wishing that life should not go well with you. May uh, life not go well with them. Yeah. Amen. The more they curse you, the more God lift you up. Amen. Amen. The more they wish you bad, the more they see you shining. Amen. The more they wish you die, the more they see life all over Amen. you. Amen. The more they wish bad against you, the more they see you adding weight. Amen. If you believe it, may it happen for you. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So how do I not attract death to my life? Avoid greed. Avoid greed. An uncontrolled rush towards life. Life will play out at its own time. Yes, sir. I don't rush myself over things. If I tell you things should, that should bother me, there are plenty. There are what? Plenty. Plenty. But I don't bother myself. Because it will play out when it will play out. And when it plays out, I say, Pastor, God so for me. Somebody will meet us and God did this up for me. Mm. Amen. Are you ready now? Yes, 
and you will bring them to PTC where we cut soap. This other is where the soap is. Yes, sir. The original soap. The original soap is on the altar. Yes, sir. We don't go to anywhere to manufacture. It is on the altar. And the soap comes from the spoken word. Yes, sir. As we are speaking it, it is foaming and it is washing away poverty. Amen. Amen. It's washing away sickness. Amen. It's washing away untimely death. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number seven. How do I run away from untimely death? Things that cause untimely death. Disregard for parents and elders. Those who disregard their parents don't live long. They don't live long. Those who disregard elders don't live long. It may be as if what they are telling you, they are joking around you. But the truth be told, they don't live long. They don't live long. So don't disturb your neighbor. Don't disregard, don't disregard your parents. Don't 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 disregard disregard your parents. If you don't have a father, adopt one person. If you don't have a mother, adopt one person. You just need somebody to be speaking over you as a father. You just need somebody that you will use to practice fatherhood and childhood. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. Because you need that covering. Ephesians 6 verse 1 to 2 says, Children, obey your parents. Not only your biological parents, but your parents in the Lord. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. For this is what? Right. Honor your father and mother. Which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. This is what I'm driving to that you may live what? So go back to verse 1 again. If you don't want to live long on earth, let me paraphrase the scripture. Children, disobey your parents in the Lord. Parents in the Lord, there is pastors. Children, insult your pastors. Children, attack your pastors. Abuse your pastors. For it is wrong. Keep going. Dishonor your father and dishonor your mother. So that you can obey the first... So that you can disobey the first commandment that has promise. Verse 3. That it may not be well with you. And you may not live long on the earth. That is the opposite of that scripture. So if you want to live long, obey and honor. If you don't want to live long, disobey and this honor. I hear me now. Learn honor. Learn what? Honor. Learn to honor what? Your parents. Learn to honor your spiritual parents. Never make that mistake of dishonor. I told myself a truth. I'm not going to live my life based on what people say. Take what you take. I will do what God asked me to do. Do what you want to do. Me, I will do what God has told me to do. If I follow what men say, I will not become what God has said concerning me. So let, let the word say and let me do what God knows is best for me to do. I have learned to honor more than I used to honor. I have learned to respect more than I used to respect. There are people that if you dishonor, it may not go well with you. There are people you must honor. There are people you must do what? Respect. There is no two ways about it. Forget about what they did to you. They may see. I used to live a life that if I looked at the way you did this to me, I didn't like it. I would separate myself from you. But I have learned to change. One constant thing in life is what? I have learned to change. There are people I don't, I would say this one because of this thing. Let me just move. Let me just face my God and myself. No, you don't face your God and yourself. Say the earth he has given to men. That which means you can never leave men. You must face men. He said, you cannot say you love God if you don't love the man whom you have seen. So despite what they did to you, despite how they hurt you, celebrate them, honor them, and move on. I'm speaking in radios. I hear me now, but I'm teaching someone something. Yeah, learn to honor people. Learn to celebrate people. So that what? It may be well with you. Number eight, cause of untimely death, Satan. Satan is the cause of untimely death. He's the chief cause. But after this service today, he will not have right over your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. This thing we discuss are biblical things, but to our contemporary world, what could cause untimely death? Number one, tobacco. Tobacco means cigarettes. It can cause untimely death. They can just drag small. As if they drag small, they drag life small too from you. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. Tobacco can. Even the tobacco company wrote on it. 
Smokers are liable. Liable means you can't escape it. That English, if you are a lawyer, if you do the law, go and check what the meaning of liable is. Liable means you can't escape it. The smokers are liable to die on. They produce this thing and they write it on the body. And you carry it and light it. And you smoke. The person that gave you the poison said you can kill your time and your dragon. Say, I don't believe what they wrote. When I didn't write them, give you. It does not kill. It does not. It kills. It kills. I know somebody that would have been alive today. When we rush the person to the hospital, they give every they cannot give the medicine at the start. They say all his system, his cells and tissues need to be boosted before they can give him medicine. Say alcohol, tobacco have eaten up all his cells. So his body cannot withstand the medicine that will keep him alive. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. There are some medicine that okay, if you go to buy medicine, they will ask you, do you have ulcer? Do you have this? Are you pregnant? Before they administer the drugs to you, because your body can't withstand that particular medicine. At that time, so this young man could not withstand the medicine. Doctor looked at us and asked, "Does he smoke? Does he drink?" We say, "Yes, he smokes and he drinks." So they need to stabilize him first before they treat him. In the process of can we stabilize him? What is killing him? Is killing him? He died. What killed him? It was not the sickness. That sickness was treatable, but tobacco and alcohol has eaten up his body. That when he broke down quickly, they could not treat him. There are people that when malaria bites, they can't, it can't easily show. There are people that when, when malaria comes, quickly it shows up because their body system is not in order any longer. So these things we are eating, they have a way of reducing the insulins, the body, the, 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 the antigens that God created in your body to fight germs. Number two, high blood pressure can cause untimely death. Always check your body. High blood pressure, hypertension can cause heart disease, and it can also block arteries. Obesity, mind the way you eat. Excessive alcohol consumption. Inactivity or lack of exercise. Those of you that like sitting in one place, you say, I know fat, make her just relax. Now people wait, they wait fast, suppose they walk around. Even somebody that is very lean, if you sit one place, it can cause undamaged death. So you have to put your body active. Have you wondered why people who read a lot live long? If you think it's a lie. Check professors, all of them have grey hairs. Yes, all professors have grey hairs, which means they are not young. They are not children. These are people who read. If you exercise your body, your body stays long. If you exercise your brain, your brain stays long. So learn to exercise your body and learn to exercise your brain. How to avert untimely death? Number one, positive confession. Use your mouth wisely. Tell your neighbor, use your mouth wisely. Use your mouth wisely. Say again, use your, mouth use your mouth wisely. Can we say the scripture together? Psalm 118, verse 17. Psalm 118, verse 17. Want to go? I, I shall not die, die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Now say it and declare to your life again. I shall not die. it again to your spirit, soul, and body. He has it. Want to go? I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. You shall not die in the name of Jesus. Amen. May it be unto you like you have spoken in Jesus' name. Amen. Ezekiel 37 verse 1. Ezekiel 37 verse 1 says, the hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. The midst of the valley which was full of bones. The next verse. We will read a long line. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, God that knowest. Again, he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Can we go on? Thus saith the Lord, God unto this bone, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Dry bones that are decayed, and I will lay 
sinews upon you and will bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put bread in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord thy God. The scripture takes till, till 28. We cannot read till 28. God says, Son of man, can his bone live? He says, Yes, he prophesied. Dry bones became life. I don't know what represents dry bone in your body. I don't know what is standing like a hindrance. What is standing like a setback. Can you mm. open your mouth and begin to prophesy life? In my finance, I prophesy life. In my academics, I prophesy life. In my business, I prophesy life. Somebody open your mouth. Speak life. Speak life. Over my work. I Lord, I prophesy life. life. Speak life. My, finance, I prophesy I speak life. life. my money will not disappear. It will come more. Life will not leave me. I will not die untimely. I will not die untimely. Baruske Petuski Prano Shakatia. I prophesy life over my body. Over my family. As you have spoken, so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. How do I activate life, long life? Number two, relate with the Spirit of God. Hmm. Relate with Him. The Spirit of God is what was breathed in you. So you have to relate with Him. Genesis 6, verse 3. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. He, his spirit gives life. Relate with the spirit of God. His spirit does what? Gives Give life. Us. His spirit will never watch the spirit of death overshadow you. That's why you must relate with his spirit. His spirit will guide you into the paths of life and pull you out from mistakes that could lead to death. That's why you need to relate with his spirit. How do I relate with the spirit of God? He is there. He hears you. Sometimes I'll be looking for something. I will search my room. Search everywhere. Search everywhere, I will not find it. But I will just come down and say, Spirit of God, please show me where this thing is. Immediately, he will just direct you where the thing is. Yet, it happens with me over and over, every time. Joanna have grown up now, he plays with everything in the house. One day, he carried my bunch of key. Where he hid it, where she hid the key. Oh God. <laughs> They've gone to work, so I was looking for my key to go out. She was playing with the key, so it's like she just flinged the key. And the key fell under my television rack. I searched everywhere. So I just went and laid down on the bed. I gave up. I said, today no going out. <laughs> Should I call Joanna to come back to look for this key? She would not be looking at you. She doesn't know where the key is. So I just stood there. I said, and I remember, as I was just lying down, I said, I remember I have not done one thing. I have not called Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit of God, please, I beg you, show me where this key is. I have searched everywhere I know in this house. I did not see the key. As I just stood up from the bed. Straight. He said, bend down. As I just bend down. I just picked it. It was as if somebody told It was as if it was Joanna that said, go and take the key here where I kept it. Just went there. Under normal circumstance, I couldn't have seen that key there. The way it was entangled with cables, wire under the table. So, Holy Spirit hears. He knows when you are speaking to him. He will be looking at you. Keep on looking for it. You've not involved me, and he will not force himself on you. Is somebody hearing me now? Yes, sir. he will not force himself on until you invite me. He's not a demon, it is demon that forces himself on somebody. He will be like this, standing watching you until you involve him. Oh, this money I'm looking for. Oh, this thing they are owing me. Oh, this thing I want God to do for me. He will stand. He has been dispatched from heaven. He said, When I leave, I will send the comforter. The comforter will stand comfortless, he will never come to your aid until you invite him. You'll be watching. Until when you are done with your toiling with your own strength and look at and say, Holy Spirit. Immediately you mention Holy Spirit, please help me. We direct you. And at that time you need to be calm. Leave everything you are doing that was on your own strength. The first thing that enters your mind that was not what you are thinking about, that is his voice. Did anybody catch me now? Yes, sir. Hear me? How do I hear the voice of God? How do I know when the Holy Spirit is speaking? When you are perturbed or you are, you are faced with so many things, there are things you'll be thinking about and you will know what you are thinking about, about two of us. You know what you are thinking. You are human being. You know what you are thinking about, right? You're thinking so, about these worries. Thinking about that. You're thinking about... That moment you say, Holy Spirit, please help me. Pay attention. 
what will drop in your mind is in stock among the things you have been thinking about. That's how you know. It's a very different voice. You know he's the one. The first place entered my mind. It was not the place I went to look for it. I said, yes, this is it. I went there straight and I saw it there. That's how it speaks. It's not magic. It's real. Train yourself to be real with him. Number three, how to activate long life. Obedience to biblical teaching. Obedience to biblical teachings. John chapter 5 verse 24. Truly, truly I say to you, whosoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Say, if you hear his word and believe him, yeah, that, for instance, I'm teaching his word. If you believe what I am teaching, which is his word, you have eternal life. As simple as that. No magic. Number four. Let your life be used by God. Be useful to God. God cannot use you and you remain useless. I usually say. One of the secrets of not falling sick in this kingdom is using your life for kingdom service. You don't want to fall sick. Always. Always use your life to serve God. Mordecai was saved by King Axesas because he had served the king. At the time, the king opened the book. He opened the book of records. What had been done for Mordecai? They honored him. He used him and who wanted to kill him to honor him. What have you done for God? When the book of records are open, what can God say? I am doing this for you. Number five, take advantage of the power of the communion table. There are Wednesdays when we announce communion here. Sometimes at home too, you can announce communion for yourself. Take advantage of the communion table. It's a simple process. Get a biscuit. Get a soft drink. And say, God, in the name of Jesus, I dedicate this drink to be the blood of Jesus. I dedicate this flesh, this biscuit, to be the flesh of Jesus. Eat it in faith. He says, when you eat me, you shall have life eternal. Philippians 2 verse 6 to 11. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him. That's number six I'm talking about now. Through the power in the name of Jesus. How do I have long life through the power in the name of Jesus? Therefore, God has high, highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is every tongue is every tongue, both death. They should confess and bow that Jesus Christ is what? Lord. That Jesus Christ is what? The Lord. John 20 31 says, But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. John 20 31. Other ways to prevent untimely death. I've talked the biblical patterns. Other ways to prevent untimely death. Increase consumption of fresh foods. I am teaching the Bible and I'm teaching contemporary thoughts. I am not only the one that will preach who knew I entered Ark. Then when he entered Ark, what happened? So explain what the Ark means to our contemporary world. That's what I'm doing now. Increase consumption of fresh fruits. Never allow a week pass without you taking fruits or veggies. If I say never allow a day pass, you tell me fruit is costly. So that's why I say never allow a week pass. Not every time you eat gari, you chew gari. You chew gari morning, chew gari afternoon, chew gari night. Pity yourself, kwano small. All range is 50 naira, 100 naira. If they say it's 100 naira, then 50 naira on two. That two orange you are licking is helping you for metabolism. It's helping to break down that gari you chew. Every time Fanta, when you drink Fanta one bottle, drink water, three glass to flush it immediately. I found out that I love mineral. If I am dehydrated or if I am overworked, I lost energy. My quickest way is to take coke. But once I take coke, it's like I'm revitalized. I don't know how it works with other person, but I see soft drinks as one of my glucose supplements. But what I do is whenever I take it, if I don't finish one bottle, I drink times three liquid. Of that coke I drank water to flush it out immediately because what I took was for the mouth. You know, the mouth, now they like that, you know, 
Pelé don't like it. Do you understand me now? That coke, those wine, those sweet, his mouth, that, his mouth, they keep people quick. What he's doing with your tummy, you don't know. It's just because of mouth, his tongue, the taste bud. Taste. You know when you drink, you watch that advert, they drink coke. And you, ah. you, too, you want to experience that. Coke does not do anything in body. It's just a demand they created and they created a supply for you. They do that advert. You see them ah, with that sweat all over their face. So when you are on that sun, the first thing you are thinking of a chilled coke. So after you take it, since you can't run away from it, take enough water for your life. Take a lot of vegetables. Take a lot of whole grain cereals. Millets, corn, rice, beans. Eating too much fatty food will cause high blood pressure or too much cholesterol in your blood. Drink juice and non-alcoholic wine instead of spirits. Avoid spirit. It's not good for your liver. Do a reasonable amount of exercise at least three times each week. Get some exercise. Most of you, you are good with home chores. You fetch water, you do this and you do that. That's a it's an appropriate exercise for you already. So don't do too much. Avoid late night outings. Late night outings. Do what? Avoid. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You can't see me outside my house after six. Unless it's on Wednesday service. Or I went out to preach somewhere. By six, be rest assured that I am in my house. You can't see me there. Outside. To the extent that if my people come back and they want to go and buy, I'll ask them, you are coming from outside, why didn't you buy it to come back? You can't go out. Take security measures. God gave us brain so that he will be at rest. Then after he created everything, he saw that he, what he created was good. And on the seventh day, he did what? He rested. Before he rested, he created a good brain. So avoid giving him unrest with foolishness. When you think well, you too will rest as God is resting. Finally, whether we live long or die early, it is in our own power to choose our fate. Whether many people who are dead today would be alive. It's because of their own thoughts, because of their own actions, because of their own ignorance. What did I say? Because of their own thoughts, actions, and ignorance. These are the three things that summarizes the teachings of today. Your thoughts, your actions, what you are doing, your ignorance, what you don't know. That's why we are trying to teach both biblical and present life principles that will help you to live a long life. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 before we pray says, I call on heaven and earth as witness today against you. That I have said before you, life and death. That's what God said. Blessings and curse. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. I have taught mine. I have searched the scripture. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. Book of John. I have searched the scripture and I have showed you according to his word. The summary of the whole matter is he said he called heaven and earth. Choose to run with what has been told you today. Honor the elders. Put God first. Don't rush life. Calm down. Live with security consciousness. Mind where you go at night. Know what to do and what not to do. And as you do all this, I speak over your life. You will not die untimely. Amen. I speak concerning your life. I said you will not die untimely. Amen. I said you will not die untimely. Amen. Amen. We are going to stand on our feet and we convert everything we had to prayer. I'm going to talk serious three prayer points. Number one, that anything that will lead to my untimely death, God averted it by the blood of Jesus. Oh God of heaven, is it through my actions, through my ignorance, or anything that will lead to my untimely death, Father, by your mercy, avert it. Can somebody open their mouth? Anything that will lead to my untimely death,
and time left. Yeah. I connect to the covenant uh, upon this altar. Yes, sir. You will not be buried on time left. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. connect to the covenant upon my life. Uh, I decree you will not be buried on time left. Yeah. Yeah. Every spirit of death running yes. around you, I command them blinded in the name of Jesus. Yeah. in God's presence. I ask and you come quickly to the altar. Come with your tie to the altar. Please off the mics when they are not at work. So that when never take their lights, never will soon take their lights now. So that we must spoil our mic. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to appear with our tithes today. As we drop this tithe on the altar, Father, in Jesus' name, may everything that has been tight in our life be loosed now. Amen. Open heavens over us. Amen. Testimony, signs, and wonders. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Drop the tithe on the altar, please. Package your offering, lift it up to heaven, and begin to pray over your offering. Speak over that offering. Father, we thank you for our offerings. Please get the envelope. If you don't have any envelope here, just package your offering with your hand and lift it up. Father, we thank you for this offering. As we put this offering in the basket, cause us to come back with testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please drop your offering and listen to the following information. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.